Hello, good morning and welcome to our reflection for the day. I've been reading the book of Esther and today I've reached chapter four. This is a book that is well worth reading. It's heroic, loving, loyal, all the best bits of a good story. The praise for the story so far is that the Jews are in exile and reasonably okay getting on with their lives, when the king, who is a vain, easily swayed sort of person, has a banquet and in a bossy, imperious way, sends for his wife so he can show her off to his guests, a trophy wife, as it were. She says, no way, Jose, and the king dumps her. So then he wants a new wife. And after a lot of fuss, Esther is chosen to be his new wife. Esther is a Jew, but her uncle Mordecai tells her to keep that under her hat, just in case it puts her in danger. Onto the scene comes Haman, appointed as chief dog's body to the king, full of pomp and circumstance, and everyone has to bow down to him. But Mordecai, a good Jew, doesn't bow down to any human, only to God. Mordecai has a good position with the king, so Haman can't get at him directly. So he forms a plot to get all the Jews in the country killed, which would include Mordecai. The edict has gone out that they're all to be killed on the same day. The only way out of the plot is to persuade the king to act. But how do you get to see the king when Haman is in the way? So, on to chapter four. When Mordecai learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the city, wailing, and, wailing loudly and bitterly. But he went only as far as the king's gate, because no one clothed in sackcloth was allowed to enter it. In every province to which the edict and order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting, weeping and wailing. Many lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's eunuchs and female attendants came and told her about Mordecai, she was in great distress. She sent clothes to him to put on instead of his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther summoned Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, assigned to attend her, and ordered him to find out what was troubling Mordecai and why. So Hathak went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him everything that had happened to him, including the exact amount of money Haman had promised to pay into the royal treasury for the destruction of the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the text of the edict for their annihilation, which had been published in Susa, to show to Esther and explain it to her. And he told him, to instruct her to go into the king's presence to beg for mercy and plead with him for her people. Hathak went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, All the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court <coughs> without being summoned, the king has but one law. They are to be put to death unless the king extends the gold scepter to them and spares their lives. But 30 days has passed since I was called to go to the king. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he said, sent back to this answer. Do not think that because you're in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, 
Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. And a spoiler alert. Esther does persuade the king to sort things out and Haman is killed instead and Esther is remembered as a heroine for eternity. There is in this passage a particular phrase that stands out. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Who knows but that you have come for such a time as this. Esther was, while she kept quiet, sitting pretty. She behaved towards the king just as a proper wife should. She was respectful and gentle and didn't have the arrogance of her predecessor. She could have kept her head down and been okay. Unless. Unless. Someone snitched and said that she was a Jew. So she prayed for the courage to stick her neck out. She fasted and prayed and her fellow Jews also fasted and prayed. And she found the courage and wisdom to approach the king with a cunning plan, using the newfound authority that she had been given by God to challenge the evil that Haman had introduced. In our time, there are, is plenty of evil directed at innocent people who have done nothing to justify the injustice and worse. There are the people of the Ukraine who have been attacked for the greed of one man. There are the starving North Koreans with a leader who ha lives in luxury. There are the Sudanese fighting mercenaries and famine in equal quantities. And even in our own country, the secure, wealthy nation repelling the refugees who have so little that they're willing to risk their lives to reach the safety of our shores. And because as Christians, we have a vested interest in loving all people in the name of Jesus. It is necessary for us to stick our necks out and encourage those in authority to work towards goodness and justice, not just selfishness, greed and indifference. When our religious leaders send messages of complaint to the Russian Orthodox leaders about their encouragement of Putin in the war, they were told to mind their own business. But it is vital that we should support them. When our religious leaders complain to Parliament that the refugees and illegal immigrants should be treated with compassion and mercy instead of being sent to Uganda, they were vilified in the press. But we should support them in their efforts, even though we are going against the grain of popular opinion. Who knows but that you have come for such a time as this. Can we stick our heads out above the parapet today? Let's finish with a prayer. Father God, Father of all people on earth, creator of all people, regardless of their status, race, religion, gender, help us to be brave enough to defend the weak, to serve the poor, to tend the sick, to comfort the bereaved and to stand up for right in the face of opposition. 
as you, Jesus, refused to run away from danger, help us also to take the right steps in your name to speak out and to support those who want to do your will. Amen. Have a great week and may God bless you.